Welcome back, everyone, to the quarantine series, the quarantine film series. I'm your host, Kabir Segel, coming to you live from the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia. What's up? It's a special show because we have another Georgian on the show. Two Georgians taking over quarantine series. It's nice to have someone local. It means the internet connections really fast. Well, let's hope. So um, this is the quarantine series. As you know, we started the series many moons ago over 140 episodes to put the spotlight back on the creative people. These are the people, the artists that create the content that provokes, entertains, and challenges us throughout the year. They pour their heart and soul into these projects. And I think it's um, important. There's always been a relationship between a symbiotic relationship between artists and audiences. We need each other. So please um, check out the artists and their works, the works that you discover on this show. Also support the artists in your community. Important to be there for the creative community. It's been tough, tough this year, as you know, film festivals, concerts have been canceled and so forth. So that's the first thing. <clears throat> Secondly, if you want to find out who's going to be on the show, you can check out my social media, subscribe. Uh, we're on all platforms, <clears throat> except maybe TikTok, but I think we need to we can start singing and get on TikTok. <clears throat> and let us know where you're watching from. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let us know where you're watching. I'm from Atlanta. We have an international show today. Let us know cities, states, countries, towns, provinces, extra points for counties. We're trying to learn the geography of the world. Special hat tip to the audience in Malaysia and South Africa. Tends to be a big following there. So thanks for tuning in there. And if you have a question, if you're very curious, inquisitive, drop it in the question field, in the comment field. We'll try to get our guests to opine, even if you're watching live or on the rebroadcast, ask a question and we will try to get your question answered. Now for the best part of the show. Best part of the show, we get to meet the remarkable artists and they really are two filmmakers. Two filmmakers, this is, this is a special edition of two. These are remarkable filmmakers. They have created a short documentary, Colby and Steven are in love, which they co-directed, screened at multiple international film festivals, such as the Canada International Film Festival and the Hometown Film Festival here, the Atlanta Film Festival, where it received an honorable mention. We're going to talk about this film. Um, the two of them, I'll spend their names now. Luca Yin Yang is a Beijing-based filmmaker and visual artist. So she's working across many mediums here. And Carlo Nassisi, let me make sure. I got my pronunciation guide to try to... Nassisi, there we go, is a director, photographer, and cinematographer pursuing long-form projects that explore regional culture, ecology, and the relationships between humans, landscapes, and politics. A smart guy. All right, so please welcome to the show the remarkable Luca and Carlo. Hey y'all. Hi there. Welcome, welcome. So first, um, let me go to you, um, Luca. How has the quarantine uh, impacted you, and how has it affected uh, your film projects? Well, uh, actually, I'm right now. I'm in Hangzhou uh, for a film festival that we are participating in. It's called Westlake Documentary Film Festival. Um, it's to be honest, it's the first film festival that I actually can participate in person instead of virtual one, like ever. That's happening um, in 2020. So um, yeah, most of the part festivals that we go in are, you know, virtual online yeah and um a lot of plans has to be changed because of the covid situation i was going to co go back to the us but like you know all plans has to be changed um like the film i'm currently working on right now which um carlo has been the one of the most important dp um in which also kobe is one of the main character um it's called Women's Word, and it has. I'm working on the post production right now. Like all plans has to be changed. Like you know, it all has to be done in China, um, because I can't travel back to the U.S. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one words can't explain. It's just like so many stuff has to change. Like I got seven boxes of stuff still in New York, just lying in storage, and um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's can't yeah, believe. It's yeah, yeah, Carla yeah. and I, we haven't seen each other for how long? Can't well, remember, more than a too year. Long. Yes. Too long. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But you're, we're back together here. This is a reunion of, of sorts. So I'm glad mm -hmm. uh, glad we're here on the, on the series together. Uh, Carlo, uh, how do you spend your typical day in quarantine? Is there a cup of tea involved? Do you go for a walk? How do you maintain creativity 
So it's not like Groundhog Day, or maybe it is like Groundhog Day. <laughs> no, it's it's not exactly. It's been an interesting quarantine for me. I started it by almost dying. I was in a really bad rock climbing accident in Mexico and came back to the U.S. to recover and was kind of really down and just thinking like, oh man, I'm just like going to spend all this time unable to do anything. I lost one of my main clients in the United States and then started getting calls from people who are interested in a filmmaker who is willing to kind of work under the radar, maybe sleep in a car and actually keep working on some projects related to COVID. And so my my partner, Maria Luisa Santos, and I uh, built a platform in the back of our Subaru Outback and have really actually been working consistently during this entire time on short documentary projects for some different clients. So um, it's been an interesting quarantine. We've actually been moving around a bit. We've just been in a car. So um, it's been it's been strange, but really actually kind of nice. Yeah. I was just I also wanted to ask, I mean it's good good it's you've been been working at I know it's been strange for so many of us. Tell us about your remarkable documentary short, uh, Call Me Steven or in Love, and why you wanted to take on this project. And these stories are um you never know which story to take on next, right? But so what was it about this story that's that spoke to you and said, you know, I gotta turn this into a film? Maybe, maybe Luca, you take that. Oh, so it all started back in 2018. Uh, I was in the United States for a residency program and I was researching about like, you know, um, Chinese American um, dancers and actress uh, from 20th century. So I was researching about this like audiovisual culture line and um, I found Kobe and she's one of the main characters for this like research I was doing, and then later on it turns into a feature film. Um, but I didn't have filmmaking experience before, so um, I participated Union Docs workshop, which Carlo was also one of the participants. And um, we became friends, and then that was that was in the summer of 2018. And we had this conversation. I always, Car Carlo I always tell a, people that we, we really connected first over really loving Api Chat Pong. That that was like the point where both of us, or where I was like, oh wow, like I really want to spend more time with this filmmaker, because that's like a yeah. pretty much thing sometimes. Yeah, yeah, we got connected first because of Api Chapong, the filmmaker. We both <laughs> have this love of this filmmaker from Thailand. Anyways, we had this conversation. I was like, Carlo, I didn't have any funding, but um, I'm traveling to Havana in two weeks. Uh, for this important shoot. Um, and Carlo was like, yeah, I, I want to be, you know, your, I want to help you. But like, even it, like, so so eventually we, we just went to Havana together. But then that's how it all started. You didn't, I was just say you didn't have a translator either. So I was the translator too. I think that was the part you, you I think you were like, oh, you need, you need help with, with camera and all this, but like so many things I didn't tell you, you didn't know what kind of trouble you got in. And then later on we yeah. were in Havana. Um, it was yeah. just so chaotic. And Carlo turns out to be this like amazing Spanish Spanish speaker. So he became- So we, we, were, we were in Havana with about 12 or 13 um, Chinese American performers and Colby was one of them. And so we were making yeah. this short film about visiting. And then while well, also I would be the translator for different things. And at in the evenings, Colby and Steven would always want to go out and dance. And Colby was 92 at the time. So we obviously were going to go with her. And Luca and Colby and Steven and I just kind of like fell into this. It was a kind of like a golden time, you know, we had a really, really a lot of fun and we just had this amazing connection between the four of us and all this really interesting shared cultural backgrounds. And um, it was one of those moments where you look at yourself rather than looking at like in the exterior world and you realize that what's happening is like really beautiful and amazing and something to capture. So Luca and I actually were like, okay, let's buy tickets to San Francisco. And I think within two or three weeks after returning from Havana, we were in San Francisco working on the film with Colby and Steven. Yep. 
I wanted to ask also, it's a great, it's a great project. Uh, how do you, this is in general, in terms of documentary filmmaking, um, how do you get people comfortable um, in front of the camera? You know, when you have a camera in the face, how do you get them to open up in such a way where they're sharing their, their vulnerabilities? Maybe Carla, mm -hmm. you can take that. Yeah, yeah, that's like the, the ultimate question in documentary film in so many ways. I don't have like a, a recipe exactly. I think I think the reason I really like documentary film is because so much of what you're doing is related to just the way you carry yourself and the way you interact with people. And I think that like, for me at least, like honesty and vulnerability and like really being willing to share something from yourself, you know, even if it's not actual details of your life, it's like, there's like an energy exchange, I think, you know? And I think that that's like a really important part of making somebody, because there's like a really huge imbalance when you have a camera, there's like a power imbalance. So everything that you can do to try and level the playing field and make the people feel comfortable and understood and listened to is, is the most important thing, I believe. And that happened in like a very strange way in Colby and Steven. And there's actually a scene in which Luca, and I are kind of fighting with Steven for control of the screen, kind of. He's filming us and we're filming him. And so we try and allude to that, to that struggle a little bit in the film. Tell me um, about, tell me about the editing and, and post-production part of it, Luca, and uh, what was involved in the actual cutting of the film and in the edit. Walk me through that process. You hear me, Luca? Uh, sorry. Hello. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? I was just asking about the the post production. Walk me through. Walk me through the post production of the film. How you edited. What you edited in. Some of the crafts of of making the the final cut, the master cut. So, uh, Carlo and I like we drafted because uh, we have to work on distance. We started working on the post uh, since beginning of two thousand nineteen, and um, so it was two of us at the very beginning, we were writing plans and we had this like 40 pages, like drafts. And then later on, we found Alex Winker, um, who's based in, you know, another place. So three of us, like we are like working online. Like um, we, it's, of, I think until the last month of the production, which like we finally be able to three of us like sit down and working together. Before that, it was all like, you know, paper edits, this and that. So at first, you know, we got, we got like seven hours of assembly and then we started trimming things down little by little. And then it was like during the editing stage, we, we, we created another version for a museum version for, for showing a museum as well. So, so we had this like 46 minutes version um, and we played it on loop and, and show it uh, in Rockbound Art Museum in June 2019, which is which was three months before we finished the final film. You know, the final film, the duration was like 30 minutes. So, yeah, we created this like two different versions. And like for the final version, we had to cut some of the scenes that we really love out, unfortunately, because of the duration limits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, we created a little kind of residency in the bottom of Luca's apartment in the basement of Luca's apartment in New York City. And we all got together <laughs> and ordered a lot of a lot of Chinese food and just like didn't leave for eight days. We just Alex, Luca and I spent in the basement there finishing the film. It's very uh, fond memories now. <laughs> yeah, totally. Tell me, uh, Carla, where can people find the find the film? Uh, that's actually a good question for the the audience watching. We actually have not figured out a distribution plan for the film yet. Um, and we are kind of nearing the end of our festival run. We've had a really wonderful festival run and we've got to show it to people literally all over the world. It's been an amazing experience, but um, we haven't found a, a distributor yet or a home for the film. Um, we have a number of folks we're talking to, but so anybody out there who might be interested we are trying to find a good home for the film i mean it's screening at the new orleans film festival currently and indie memphis film festival and the hot springs film festival so if you go to those websites you can watch the film 
Um, but in terms of a permanent home, that is to be determined. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. All right, cool. Um, Carl, you talk to me. I want to talk a little bit about your, some of your future projects and things you have lined mm -hmm. up. Uh, Sha Liu Kang Kiang. Tell me about that, Carlo. <laughs> Sha Liu Kia. Yeah. yeah. That's a project I've been working on. Actually, when Luca and I met, that was the feature film that I was working on and the it's kind of little residency program at Union Docs in, in New York. And Luca had her feature there. So this film I've been working on for about four years, and it's about carbon offsetting schemes in an in indigenous controlled forest in Oaxaca, Mexico. Um, and it's a it's a film that explores our relationship to nature and particularly the ways in which conservation programs that are very connected to the free market come up against the communities who actually have to enact them. You know, the communities who actually live and inhabit these forests. So it's exploring the ways in which, for instance, Google would purchase offsets in a forest in Oaxaca and then able to claim reductions in their emissions. Um, so I've been working on this for a long time. We're finishing it up right now. We The COVID has delayed us finishing the film, um, but it's a project that's very near and dear to my heart. My partner, Maria Luisa Santos, is the producer and editor of it. And I'm uh, making the film with the Mexican geographer and PhD candidate at the University of Texas at Austin, Jeronimo Barrera. Awesome. Looks mm -hmm. great from these pictures. I'm just, um, I'm excited to see it when the, when the time is right. And it is nice to have a, a fellow Georgian working in, in projects in Mexico. We need to talk, mm -hmm. we need to get there and talk, talk about that. Uh, and mm -hmm. Luca, Luca, tell me about uh, what you have, what you're working on next. We kind of alluded to it a little bit, but tell me about what you're working on uh, next as well. Uh huh. Uh, I'm currently working on the post production of that feature film I mentioned earlier, which started in 2018. It's called Women's Word, in which Kobe is also one of the main character. Uh, the film is structured as a road movie, and it's about this road show of this group of senior Chinese dancers. So from San Francisco, we went to Havana, and uh, you know we were in Las Vegas, we were in Hawaii. Eventually, went to we went to Shanghai in China. And uh, the story unfolds during the road, um, the road movie. You know, you get to know more and more about each main characters in the film. And uh, the film eventually, you will find out, is a dedication to this uh, Chinese American filmmaker who passed away 50 years ago, who made 11 films mm -hmm. in her life, but like most of them were lost. And in, in the in the end of 1930s. She made this film called Women's Word, features all Chinese female cast, but the film itself was lost. So um, this film is really like a dedication to um, Chinese American women who were in this 20th century audio visual culture history. Yeah. Got it, got yeah. it. This is a question for both of you. I just want to ask maybe first to you, Luca, how do you know what project to take on next? Every project is, you know, takes a substantial amount of time and energy. So what are the attributes of a project that you're like, you know what? I want to do that next. Mm -hmm. I always feel like it's it's just like you know you 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 you're meeting with person or you're meeting things that you really love, and then there's at the beginning there's this a little bit of reason, and then it it leads you into this bigger world, and then later on things unfolds naturally. You 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 can't control it, and then the moment when you realize, hey, I'm I'm on this, I'm on this ship, and and then things already start rolling. It's just like how everything unfolds for this feature film and how it unfolds like later on leads us to make Kobe and Stephen are in love. It's really like you get on this journey, you follow your heart, and then um, how can I say? A lot of things will happen naturally. Yeah. If you really follow your, your instinct and your heart. Yeah. Well said, and Carlo? Yeah, this is something that I think Luca and I work so well together because we feel really similarly about this. Um, I've I figure out my ways of paying rent and making a living, and it's I don't pay rent by making the films I care about, you know. So I'm not like an industrial filmmaker really, and so and I think that's like an important part of this. It's it really is like Luca said, it's the kind of serendipity and like 
uh, it's sometimes hard to separate like the way in which I'm living my life from the projects I'm working on because each project so conditions the everyday things I do and the experiences I have that it just feels like they're intertwined essentially. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just a kind of natural progression and it's about like kind of living passionately and asking questions and like being willing when the project or the idea or the person presents itself to dive in and to like put other things on hold and to really embrace embrace opportunities when they come to you yeah well said well said um embracing opportunities when they come to you i think that that's a, an anthem for so many of us um so last question before i let you go tell me about your inspirations as documentarians who are some of the um auteurs that you admire and appreciate so maybe luca yeah. first to you and then and then to carla go ahead luca uh, sorry i have like you, who are the filmmakers, documentarians you admire or her mentors, people you look up to? Oh, um, uh, Carla and I, we both love Api Chapong, um, the filmmaker from Thailand. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big music fan. I think I got a lot of influence from musicians like Tom Waits, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's also a mutual love. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think Jim Jamush in, inspired me a lot um, at a young age and even until now. And also writers like Paul Austers. And, and I think they're, they're all belonging to this one same group of people. <laughs> yeah, and the last three persons are all friends. So, um, yeah, that's... Got it. And, and, and you, Carlo? Yeah, my all-time favorite director probably other than maybe Api Chapong is Kelly Reichardt. I, I love her films. I think that she's not a documentary filmmaker. And I actually maybe don't watch as many documentaries as I should, considering that's what I do. Uh, but yeah, Kelly Reichardt, the way that she can make a very small thing so significant and like capture the texture of life in a beautiful way that makes I think that she actually has like forever changed the way like I occupy space in the world, as does Api Chapong. So those are my two favorite people, probably. Yeah. Got it. Well, it's wonderful to wonderful to uh, <clears throat> have you on the show. I encourage. Let me get your social media up here. <clears throat> there we go. Haptic Films Studios and LukeYoungWorks.com. So I encourage everyone watching to check out the social media, the the website, the social media. Subscribe, follow their stuff, so they. You can be in the loop as to what their current and future projects are. Thank you so much both for being on the show today. Thank you. It was really fun. Thank you. Yeah. That's our show today. Um, keep it here to find out who will be coming next. Always have great um, filmmakers on the broadcast, just like today. And they're not always as international, so this was a special one. And um, make sure to take care of the art, because the art will always take care of you. Stay safe, everyone.